Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, Counter Skull Hater, back here with another EDH guide. Uh, this time we will be going over uh, Tox Real the Corrosive. Uh, it is a 7 7 legendary uh, slug horror for five generic and double black that says at the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. And then creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. Whenever a, whenever a creature you, could, you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a one, one black slug creature token. And then for one blue and a black, uh, you can sacrifice a slug and draw a card. So kill our opponent's creatures, uh, create slugs, that's Sacrifice the slugs to talk thrill the corrosive to draw cards. That's the goal of this deck. So first we have like cards to kill our opponent's stuff and put slime counters on them. And then we have like value-based cards. So let us begin with Necroplasm, uh, a 1-1 one -one ooze with for uh one generic and double black that says at the beginning of your upkeep, play a plus one counter on Necroplasm. At the beginning of your end step, destroy each creature with converted man cost equal to the number of plus one plus encounters on Necroplasm. So eventually, uh, this will end up destroying itself. But that's why it has Dredge 2 uh, <clears throat> in that case. Meaning if you would draw a card instead, you may return this card from your hand, from your graveyard to your hand, and put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. It's pretty nice. Reaver Demon. Uh, it is a 6 6 flying demon for four generic and quadruple black that says when it comes into play. If you played it from your hand, destroy all non-artifact and non-black creatures. So that means our slugs and our commander is safe. And everything that isn't an artifact creature or black, a black creature is dead. So that's that. Phyrexian Obliterator. It is a 5-5 five -five horror with trample for quadruple black and it says whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's <coughs> controller sacrifices that many parents, excuse me. Killing Wave uh, is a sorcery that says for each creature's controller, sacrifice it, it unless he or she pays X life. And that is comes at the cost of X and black. <laughs> Clack Bridge Troll. Uh, it is an 8-8 uh, troll with trample and haste for three generic and double black. That says when it enters the battlefield, uh, target opponent creates three 01 white goat creature tokens. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap Clack Bridge Troll, you gain three life and you draw a card. Massacre Worm. Uh, it is a 6-5 worm for three generic and triple black that says when it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two until in turn. And whenever a creature your opponent controls dies, uh, that player loses two life. Blight Beetle. Uh, this is helping this is helping us kill our opponent's creatures because. It is a 1-1 one, one insect with protection from green, meaning it can be blocked, dealt, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything green. Uh, and that is all for one genetic and a black. And it also says, creatures your opponent's control can't have puzzle and puzzle counters put on them. So it prevents your opponent from buffing uh, their creatures to keep them alive. Uh, with, at least with puzzle and puzzle counters, they can still use like until end of turn effects. Uh, things like that, but still uh, can really ensure that your opponent's stuff is going to die. Shuts down green, that's for sure.
an inexorable tide. It is an enchantment for three generic and double blue that says whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. And in case you didn't know, you're like Ryan. Talks rule the Crosif only has uh, black in his mana cost, but he has a blue black ability, meaning his his color identity is blue and black. So, in case there was any confusion in there, now you know. And that goes with all commanders. If they have like uh, two colors in them, if say you had a commander with two colors of mana cost in its mana cost, but it had a but it had another uh, ability that had that required like a different kind of mana. So like you had a uh, red blue commander that had an activated ability that cost black. Well, in case that case, that commander's color identity would also be black in addition to red and blue. So now that that explained, we move on to Viral Drake. Not viral on social media, by the way. Uh, although it is a one for flying infect Drake with Drake with flying infect, excuse me, uh, for three generic and blue. And then for three generic and a blue, you can proliferate. And so you proliferate is where you choose any number of currents and or players with counters on them, then give each another counter of a kind already there. And the effect is that this uh, creature deals damage in, in the form of minus one, minus one counters uh, to creatures, obviously, and then to players in the form of poison counters. And if a player has 10 or more poison counters, they lose the game, and that's the end time. Sludge Monster to go along with our commander. Because for three generic and double blue is a 5-5 five, five horror. That says when air is about with or tanks, put a slime counter on up to one uh, other target creature. And non horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 2 2. That is a very important part the base power and toughness 2 2 part and lose all abilities. Meaning that if they had any way to buff themselves, uh, your, your opponent's creatures are probably now unable to. And it they're now two twos, making them way easier, way easier to kill. And it says non creatures with slime counters on them. Doesn't mean that these slime counters have to have been put on by the sludge monster. So all in all, pretty nice. Uh contagion engine. Uh it is an artifact for six generic that says when it enters the battlefield. Put a minus one, minus one count in each creature target player controls, obviously going to be your opponent. Uh, and then for four generic, you can tap it, proliferate, then proliferate again. So that can do like a lot of damage to your opponent's board state and just like kill your opponent's stuff, making a lot of slugs. Uh, Yogmoth, Thran Physician. Uh, he is a 2-4 legendary human cleric with protection from humans for two generic and double black. And he also says you can pay one life and sacrifice another creature. And that goes nicely along with our slugs. And we put a minus one, minus one count to one target creature and draw a card. And then for double black, we can discard a card and proliferate. So this all along goes very nice. Allows us to draw cards off our slugs that we sacrifice, make it even easier to kill our opponent's creatures and proliferate and discard cards we don't need. So great uh, creature to be running within this deck. Contention Clasp uh, is an artifact for two generic. Uh, that's this one enters the battlefield, put a muscle muscle count on target creature, and then for four generic, you can tap it, it just proliferates. So it's like Contagion Engine, except downgraded. Guild Pact Informant is a 1-1 uh, Fairy Rogue with flying for two generic and a blue. And it says when it deals common damage to a player or a planeswalker, once again, proliferate. Clock Spinning, interesting card because it is an instant for a blue that has buyback of three generic, meaning you can pay an additional Three generic as you cast it, and if you do, 
put this card into your hand as it resolves, and you choose a counter on target permanent or suspended card and remove that counter from that permanent or, call, or card or put another of those counters on it. So what you can do is use clock spinning here to uh, put more slime counters onto like a creature that already has them or more minus one minus one counters. Or if you're running any cards in this deck with suspend, you can remove those time counters from those cards with suspend that are uh, in exile that you own. So all in all, pretty nice, not too bad. Deep Glow Skate uh, is a 3-3 fish for four generic and a blue that says when it enters the battlefield, double, double that, double the number of each kind of counter on any number of target permanents. So this means you double the slime counters, the minus one, minus one counters that may be there on your opponent's creatures as well. Uh, you could also double up on plus one, plus counters that may be existing on your creatures or loyalty counters on planeswalkers you may or may not have, but most likely slime counters. Uh, Thrumming Bird is a 1-1 one, one flying bird horror for one generic and a blue. And when it deals common damage to a player, proliferate once again. Sword of Truth and Justice is an equipment artifact uh, for three generic. That says a quick creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from white from blue. And whenever a quick creature deals common damage to a player, put a plus plus counter on a creature you control, then proliferate a quick cost of two. Generic. Uh, it, by the way, a quick can only be done on your turn. And when you when you use equip abilities of artifacts you control, you attach it to the creature. So then it becomes equipped to that creature. Anyways, moving on to Grim Affliction. For two generic and a black, it's an instant that puts a minus one minus one counter on target creature, then proliferates. So pretty simple, pretty nice. Uh, Sazat's Will. Uh, for four generic and a black, it is an instant that has you choose one. If you control a commander, as you cast the spell, you may choose both. So the first one, the first option I should say, is each is that each opponent sacrifices a creature they control with the greatest power. So get rid of something pretty scary. And then exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards, and then create X01 black fall creature tokens where X is the greatest power among creatures' cards. Exile this way is the second option. But you can do all, but you can do both of these if you have your commander out or if you have a commander out. So pretty nice. Uh, get rid of something big and bad. Kalatas, Blood Chief of Get, uh, is a 5 5 legendary vampire warrior for five generic and double black. That and it says for triple black, you can tap it and destroy target creature. If that creature would is put into a graveyard this way, put a black vampire creature token on the battlefield, its power is equal to that creature's power. And its toughness is equal to that creature's toughness. Razakath, the foul blooded. So now I think we get into value. Yeah. Also, sac so like sacrificing our slugs to do stuff. So Razakath, the foul blooded, to start it off, it, he is an 8 8 uh, legendary demon with flying and trample. And he costs five generic and triple black. And then he says you can also pay two life to him and sacrifice another creature to him. And search your library for a card and put in that card into your hand and then shuffle your library. So this effectively turns your slugs into search spells, uh, which can be pretty scary. Champion of Stray Souls uh, is a full four skeleton warrior for four generic and double black. And it says for three generic and double black, you can tap it and sacrifice X other creatures and return X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this ensures that your slugs are also essentially reanimation spells. And then for five generic and double black, uh, you can also put champion or straight souls 
on top of your library from your graveyard. So this also essentially never dies unless it goes to exile. And it guarantees that your other creatures do not die and that you sacrifice your slugs to do it in the process. But still, then we have Blood Artist. Uh, it is an O1 vampire for one generic and black that says whenever it or another creature dies. So that's on the A side of the battlefield because it says another creature. So your opponent's you. Uh, target player loses one life and you gain one life. So start draining people. As your slugs are dying or being sacrificed to Toxville to draw cards. Uh, Dictate of Erebos for three generic and double black is the enchantment with flash, meaning you being played at any time. So this is also on your opponent's turns. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So not only when you sacrifice your slugs, uh, are you gaining value out of them for drawing cards or like doing whatever. Now with Dictate of Erebos, your opponents are having to sacrifice creatures that could have slime counters on them. So make sure you have like your opponent's board, like all their creatures have slime counters on them, and then you'll get a lot of value out of this because you can sacrifice a bunch of your slugs and then just keep having those slugs replace with like three more, essentially. So the kind of variable is pretty nice, allows you uh, to kill your opponent's stuff while you are drawing cards thanks to Toxville. Uh, Grave Betrayal. A great card to go along with it because for five generic and double black is enchantment that says whenever a creature you don't control dies, uh, return to battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus a counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So this means you can steal your opponent's stuff as you kill them uh, and you're getting slugs in the process. So all in all, now you're just stealing from your opponents. And to make it even worse for your opponents, Overseer of the Damned. Uh, sorry, YouTube, for profane language, but it's all in the card. Uh, for five, I mean, it is a 5-5 five, five flying demon for five generic and double black. And when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target creature. And whenever a non-token creature and opponent control dies, Create you two black zombie creature token. So as your opponent's creatures are dying now, uh, not only are you getting slugs, but also two two zombies are also joining your forces. So pretty nice. Ayara, uh, first of Lockthwain, uh, is a two three. She is a two three legendary elf noble for triple black, and it says, and she says whenever. Uh, she or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And you can attempt to sacrifice another black creature and draw a card. So instead of having to pay that uh, blue and a black for one of your slugs, you can instead just tap to Ayara and draw a card uh, by sacrificing your slug because your slugs are black 1-1s. One so pretty nice. Uh, Demon of Death's Gate. Poor boy. It is a 9 9 flying trample demon uh, for six generic and triple black. However, you can get it at the amazing price of six life and the sacrifice of three black creatures you control, which would be pretty easy rather than pay its mana cost. How awesome is that? Pretty awesome. Uh, next, we have Body Double. Uh, it is a zero zero shapeshifter for four generic and blue. However, you may have entered the battlefield as a copy of any creature card in your graveyard. And since your opponents are having a lot of, since there's a lot of stuff, your opponents, since a lot of stuff is dying under your opponent's control, there we go. Let me get my words straight. Uh, this will be a really good card because then you've got like a wide selection to copy from. Sakashima of a thousand faces for three generic and blue. It, he is a 3 1 legendary human rogue that you may have entered the battlefield as a copy of another, of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a thousand faces, other abilities. Uh, the only other ability it has is partner and the legendary rule not applying. Seriously, that is very powerful because then you can have 
another tox rule, meaning that you can have two tox rules. So instead of a creature your opponent uh, controlling having minus one, minus one for each slime counter on it, it has minus two, minus two, because you now have two tox rules. And me that also means whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, uh, if it has a slime counter on it, now instead of you getting one, one, one black slug creature token, you get two. So that is very nice. Lazav, Demir Mastermind. He is a 3-3 three, three legendary shapeshifter with hexproof for double black and double blue. And he says whenever a creature card is split into a grave into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere. So that's via that could be via their library back from exiles, like certain Eldrazi cards can do that if you didn't know. Uh or dying or sacrifice. You may have Lazav, Demir Mastermind become a copy of that card, except its name is Lazav, Demir Mastermind. It's legendary in addition to its other type, and it has hexproof and this ability. So this is a very broken card in this deck because you can have a lot of stuff uh, your opponent's control die. And if those creatures happen to be non-token creatures and they go to the graveyard, Lazav can become a copy of them and copy all their nasty and scary abilities. Just like how the Scarab God get, can, because uh, he or it is a 5-5 five, five legendary god for three generic and, and a blue and a black. Uh, and he, he I guess, uh, says at the beginning of your upkeep, each one loses X life and you scry X. Where X is the number of zombies you control. But Ryan, how are we going to get zombies? Well, first of all, Overseer of the Damned. Second of all, for two generic, a blue and a black, we can exile a target creature card from a graveyard or any graveyard I get to get to say and create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4 4 black zombie. And when Scarab God, the Scarab God dies, uh, you return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So this is pretty nice. This can guarantee that your opponents never get their creatures back from their graveyards if they're playing black. Uh, and it also essentially puts their creatures onto your battlefield. So all, in all pretty nice. And kills your opponents faster. Phyrexian Altar. For three generic, it is an artifact that you can sacrifice a creature to it and add one mana of any one color. So if you have like a bunch of, so you have, say you have three slugs, you have Tox for a while, right? You can sacrifice two of those slugs to make a blue and a black. And then you can pay that blue and a black to sacrifice your remaining one slug to draw a card. I mean, a little inefficient, but still great for like these uh, decks that like run like creature tokens or create or have commanders that create creature tokens. So all in all, pretty good. As now it's alter, same thing, except for three generic. And it's an artifact that you can sacrifice a creature to it and you add two colors mana to your mana pool instead of one mana being one color. So pretty nice mana, especially in blue black, it needs it. And then blasting station is a artifact for three generic that can tap to sacrifice a creature and then it deals one damage to target creature player and it says whenever creature comes to play, may it untap Blasting Station. It's all in all pretty nice. So that means if our opponent has a bunch of 1-1s, one -ones, like they have five 1-1s, one -ones, right? And then we tap Blasting Station to sacrifice one of our slugs, right? And then, and by the way, all of those 1-1s uh, one -ones have slime counters on them. But they're still alive. So they were like two suits or something. So that means you can sacrifice the slug you have, kill one of your opponent's creatures with those uh, slug and the slime counters on them if they're like low enough on toughness. That then creates you a 1-1 uh, one, one black slug. Uh, thanks to Talk Thrill, you untap Blessing Station and you do it all over again. It's pretty nice. Flesh Carver uh, is a 2-2 human wizard with Intimidate, meaning it can't be blocked except by creatures your opponents control uh, that share a color. 
uh, with it or artifact creatures. And this is all for two generic and a black. And then uh, for one generic and black, you can sacrifice another creature to uh, Flesh Carver and put two plus plus counters on it. And then when it dies, uh, you put an XX black horde creature token onto the battlefield Rex is Flesh Carver's power. So pretty nice. Eater of Hope is a 6 4 flying demon for five generic and double black. And then for black, you can sacrifice another creature and regenerate, meaning that the next time it'll be destroyed, you instead remove it from combat and remove all damage from it and untap it. Uh, and then for two generic and black, you can sacrifice two other creatures and destroy a target creature, meaning you can make use of your slugs to make more slugs and also destroy your opponent's creatures. So pretty nice. Black Market is an enchantment for three generic and double black that says whenever a creature dies, so as on any side of the battlefield, play a charge card on Black Market and game of your pre-combat main phase, add a black mana to your mana pool, uh, free charge card on Black Market. And this can be proliferated uh, thanks to uh, all the proliferate stuff we have. So proliferate also, also can affect like how much mana we have in this case. Uh, Ruthless Death Fang is a 4-4 flying dragon for four generic, a blue and a black. And it says whenever you sacrifice a creature, target opponent sacrifices a creature. So make use of you sacrificing your slug to talk to or whatever uh, aristocrat sort of card you may have on the battlefield. Uh, once again, Eliminate the competition for four generic and a black is a sorcery that says as an, as an additional cost to cast, eliminate the competition. Sacrifice X creatures, destroy X target creatures. So you could just sacrifice like a lot of slugs you have and then destroy a bunch of other uh, creatures you've bon your opponents control that could have slime counters on them. Uh, Ghani Turtle Bontu uh, is a 5-6 legendary zombie god with menace for three generic and double black. And when he, I think it is, enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of, of any number of other permanents. So that excludes God Eternal Bantu, then draw them many cards. And when God Eternal Bantu dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. So this always comes back and can sacrifice your slugs multiple times to draw cards. Scavenger Drake uh, is a 1-1 one -one Drake of Flying for three generic and a black. And it says whenever another creature dies to so that, once again, uh, your opponent's side, your side of the battlefield, doesn't matter if a creature dies, then you may put a plus plus counter on Scavenger Drake. Synthetic Destiny, a great card to make use of the tokens we have because for four generic and Double blue is an instant that says exile all creatures you control at the beginning of the next end step. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal that many creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest of the, the revealed cards into your library. So if you have like an army of slugs and like nothing else really exciting going on, cast Synthetic Destiny and then you'll surely get something going on. And then we have Kalatas, Trader of Get. So first we was Blood Chief, now he's the Trader of It. Uh, is a legendary vampire warrior uh, with lifelink. He is a 3-4 for two generic and, and double black. Uh, and he says if a non tuned creature on pawn controls would die, he said exile that card and put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And I think I just realized, yeah, that, I think that screws up the whole plan because it exiles it instead of it dying. So I guess that wouldn't trigger off uh, Tox Will. Hmm. For two generic, though, and a black, you can sacrifice another vampire or zombie and put two plus plus counters on Kalatos, Trader of Guests. So probably there's like a better card to put in here. So, like, uh, corpse cobbling, I think it is, or something like that. My mistake. 
Uh, Nadir, Agent of Dusk Neil. Uh, he is a 3 3 legendary elf warrior for five generic and a black. And he says, whenever a, a token neutral leaves the battlefield, put a one, put a plus one plus one counter on Nadir, Ancient of Dusk Neil. And whenever Nadir leaves the battlefield, so leaves, this means can be exiled from the battlefield, die, be returned to your hand, either one of those. Uh, or phases out, even I believe that also works. Uh, but when he leaves the battlefield, create a number of one one green elf warrior creature tokens equal to his power. This is uh, you're sacrificing so many slugs, and that counts as triggering off the deer into the dust of the dust meal. He'll be getting those pulse of counters so that when he leaves, he creates a bunch of one one green elf warrior creature tokens equal to his power. Uh, Magis, mag, magistrate's step, scepter uh, for three generic it is an artifact that for four generic it can tap and put a charge counter on itself and then it can tap to remove three charge counters from itself and then you take an extra turn after this one <clears throat> so why do we have this in here well proliferate since we have so much of it why not make use of it to also give us extra turns Makes sense to me. Pitless, pitiless plunderer, excuse me. He is a one for a uh, human pirate for three generic and a black. And he says whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tat, sacrifice this artifact, add one man if you have one color to your mana pool. And this does not say non token. So if your slugs die, treasure. If your opponent's creatures die, treasure. If the whole board gets wiped, treasure, like lots of it. Crowd crypt, crowded crypt, excuse me, uh, is an artifact for two generic and a black, and it's can tap for a black. And then whenever a creature you control dies, so once again, non-token creature, uh, token creature doesn't matter here in this case. You put a corpse counter on crowded crypt anyways. Uh, and then for four generic and double black, you can tap and sacrifice it and create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token with decayed for each court counter on credit crypt. So and a creature with decayed can't block, and whenever it attacks, you sacrifice it at the end of combat. And then we get into our non-basic lands. Myriad landscape is a land that enters about the tap and can tap for a colors or for two generic, you can tap it, sacrifice it. And search your library for up to two basic land cards that share uh, a land type. Uh, put them on some field taps, then show for your library. Phyrexian Tower, it is a legendary land that can tap for a colorless or can tap and you can sacrifice your creature to it to add double black. Con's Bastion, it is a land that can tap for a colorless or for four generic, it can tap and once again proliferate. Arch of Araska is a land with Ascend, meaning to control 10 or more permanents at any time. Uh, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. Then you can tap to add a color to your mana pool, or for five generic, you can tap and draw a card. But you can only activate that if you have the city's blessing. And city's blessing, you will most likely have it due to you having a lot of tokens produced by Tox Rill. Then we have our 23 basic swamps and our 23 basic ons. And in addition to that, the end of this EDH guide starring Tox Real the Corrosive. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, smash like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss more of this content. And share this video with others. Uh, Please, guys, we're only at eight subscribers. We're only like two away from 10. And then I'll be able to do my 10 subscriber special. Keep viewing that Chatterfang video. I want to see its views keep going up. You don't have to, but I loved it if you would make me make my day. Uh, keep up with the positive uh, feedback and like how many views you're giving my videos. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.